If you work from spirit, you'll find out what plants will give you the medicine to heal you, what trees have medicine to heal you, the land will support you, the land will help you get work, but we have to make these forces our allies. They're our family. Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation. If you ever want to understand what in the world's going on with the world through a shamanic spiritual lens, then do we have the Awakening to the Spirit World show for you. Today I'll be talking with Sandra Ingerman, shaman, therapist, podcaster, the award-winning author of at least 12 books, winner of the 2007 Peace Award from the Global Foundation for Integrative Medicine, one of the top 10 spiritual leaders by Spirituality and Health Magazine, and the co-author, along with Hank Wesselman, of a new book on shamanism and awakening that has completely blown me away, Awakening to the Spirit World. And that's just what I want to talk with her about today, about the shamanic path to direct revelation, the awakening of humanity, and how to plug in and get guidance through this interesting time. That (laughs) plus we'll talk about, that was air quotes, interesting time. That plus we'll talk about the spirit of Santa Fe, dragons and unicorns, Kanaloa and Hina, the four directions, abracadabra, the power of scalatitude, and what in the world blue jeans, a couch, and transfiguration has to do with anything. So welcome back to the show, Sandra. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. Thank you, Michael. It's such a delight. Always a delight. <laughs> oh, it is such a delight having you here, and certainly under interesting times. So... Before we dive right into things, what do you see happening with COVID-19 protests and more from a shamanic point of view? First, I'll I'll explain. Shamanism is a practice that dates back over 100,000 years. It's a universal spiritual practice. And so we have this amazing opportunity to listen to all this wisdom that's been passed down for tens of thousands of years. And we've been warned about the times that we're living in now. We've already been given the tools by the ancestors and we just haven't been listening. So in the practice of shamanism, um, Every culture practices it, but they all have their different unique ceremonies and their different unique practices. But they have understandings that all kind of connect. Um, So the practices are different, but the understandings are the same. And from a shamanic point of view, the very first thing I ever learned in shamanism is that epidemics come from negative thought forms. And in shamanism, there are uh, four different causes of illness. And one of them is what's called a spiritual intrusion. Mm -hmm. And what happens is we're human beings and we're here to express ourselves and, and learn how to be spirit and form, but also to learn about our own humanness. You know, that's part of evolution and growth on on earth and so it's important that we express our fear express our anger express our outrage but from a shamanic point of view if you don't do something with that energy Mm -hmm. it ends up just shooting out like psychic darts everywhere to your loved ones to the environment back to you again um so you know it's behavior we we really want to change so let's look at the covid first we had the fires in the amazon and the amazon uh is known as the lungs of the earth Mm -hmm. then we moved into the fires in australia and our hearts were broken beyond anything we can imagine by watching a billion beings, precious, innocent beings die. And in the midst of all of this, we've had all this immigration, fights about immigration, families being separated, 
um, just an incredible amount of sadness, angst, anger all over the world being expressed. And so from a shamanic point of view, when we look at the collective energy, we're all connected. Everything is connected. Nothing is separated. So we have these events that created this energy. And without the knowledge, we didn't have, um, uh, you know, the indigenous people, of course, have this knowledge. But for those of us who grew up in a modern day culture, what do you do with all these feelings? And what do you do with everything that's coming up, your outrage, your fear? It explodes. And it exploded into um, a spiritual intrusion that basically came to wake us up. Uh, because we really, we've gotten lost. We've gotten lost. The power of unconditional love. We've forgotten about kindness. We've forgotten about honor and respect. And um, we, we've uh, hurt the environment. We're putting poison into it every minute. Um, people you know, are not uh, really working in a, in a way to work spiritually. They don't know the spiritual tools that we can do to join together as a global community to create positive changes. So all this energy just got stuck. And what does stuck energy do? It creates illness. So... We have a spiritual intrusion. It's come to wake us up. We've gotten lost, which means this is actually here to serve us, isn't it? Yes, it's definitely here to serve us. Um, the universe called it in to say, okay, humans, stop, stop. <laughs> and it did. It started waking people up. And then look what happened next. Um, next came Black Lives Matter. Um, people did start to wake up to, we're not behaving well, you know, on this earth. And I, it's interesting because you have to wonder what was the next wave going to be with the COVID? Because you could, you could see the anger still building, the fear still building. A lot of spiritual practice is being taught, a lot of people bringing into the spiritual world. So we were doing our work to bring light into the collective, to heal what was going on. And then the next thing that, that came about was showing us that we have work to do about how we treat each other and about equality on this planet. And I think that what's so stunning to some of us of other generations is we fought this battle. We fought this battle. So how did it come back around again? And why wasn't it taken care of the last time when we protested around this? And so this is a time where it's no longer giving lip service to, yeah, we did protests back in the 60s and before people were protesting before that for a really long time. And a lot of talk happened and some change happened. But look at the huge response to this all over the world that black lives, indigenous lives, people from every culture we're all equal. And why, why aren't we treated as equals? <laughs> it, it's interesting to me. I was reading something earlier today that it said that the protesters are the ones calming down the police. And I saw pictures of protesters, particularly they put white, white lives up front, sitting almost in half lotus in front of the police to help bring them down. And I can't help but thinking that this movement is showing that we can't meet violence with violence. We have to go above it or in a sense in a shamanic way below it to meet this on a higher plane. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I really trust, you know, the generations that 
are out there protesting right now to come up with these new solutions. Um, I, I've been really curious about um, my, myself with all of this because this is a very big issue for me. Um, uh, race is a really big issue for me and equality is uh, very, very close to my heart. But I find um, my community is used to hearing in times of strife, me coming on Facebook and, and, and sharing inspirational words and practices and what we can do. And I have just stayed completely silent during the COVID and during these latest protests. It's like what's been happening for me at the age of 67, after being so socially active in um, a good part of my life, being so involved in shamanism and talking about spiritual intrusions and that if we don't learn how to start to transmute, we're, we're just sending too much negative energy out into the collective. And it, it was like, now my next step is really how far in can I go to tap into those new solutions mm -hmm. as a younger generation is tapping into now? Um, so it's interesting um, because some of us are being called to be really out there. And like myself, I hear from a lot of people who are going into the deepest silence they've ever touched into. It's interesting because we had on uh, Mark Nepo yesterday, just a, a beautiful, beautiful soul. And mm -hmm. we were talking about how we are each individuals as part of the collective. And we are, I call it, I call it roses on the bush, but we are all individual cells on the organism of human beingness, one human beingness. And so you're drawing inward. And I want to go into some techniques for all of us to draw inward here in a minute. You're drawing inward helps to give you, boom, 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 the biggest drum in the room to bring everything else into a harmonic convergence, dare I say, or frequency, you're holding space from for all from within. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's so important. So before we dive into some of these tools... You say nature itself becomes a helping spirit that has much to share with us about how to bring our lives back into harmony and balance. How is nature trying to teach us right now? Well, we are nature. And so, um, you know, nature is just reflecting who we are. And when people start to observe and do a practice that we call deep listening and awakening to the spirit world, where you, you start to, I like to start with the words, may you step into my, may I step into your field of energy before I talk to anything in nature, mm -hmm. get permission. And then let's think about this. The earth is 4.6 billion years old. Air was the very first living being that ever entered this earth. It means it was the first being that showed up, was the wind. And um, so we're going back billions of years. And the primal sea, we're going back billions of years. The sun, probably the youngest being of all the elements, but the sun, you know, think how old the sun is and how it gives us life. And so we live in such a limited perspective. We're looking at the difference of 2019 to 2020. You start to talk to the earth about what's going on. You start to talk to the wind about what's going on. And they're giving you a perspective of billions of years. And so I have a lot, my, I'm in love with the elements. I, I have been having a love affair with the elements for God knows how long. I love them. And they always talk about, we don't realize we're here. We're here for less than a blink of an eye. 
less than a blink of an eye. And so nature's always saying to us, you're here now. What do you want to do with your time here? And, you know, we're, we're so in love with trees. Um, my students, when I teach them how to start to talk to trees, it's probably one of the most healing things that come into their life. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things I'm teaching about the COVID um, is, uh, is one of the things that we don't understand that the indigenous people really understand well is that the land that we live on, the local land that we live on, loves us, loves us. And when we start to talk to it, may I step into your field of energy? Tell me about your life. What, what, you know, let's say you live in, in an apartment building in New York and you say to me, you can't tell me to go out in nature and do deep listening. I live in the city in New York. No, you go out, you sit on the concrete, and you say to the earth, may I step into your field of energy and start to ask under the concrete, start to talk to the land and ask it about its history. What, what, what's happened on this land? Who are you? And let me introduce myself to you. I live here and I'm really struggling right now. And you start having this conversation and all of a sudden the land becomes a helping spirit for you. And so I've been journeying on this and I've been teaching this to as many people as I can if you journey to the land and get the land as an ally for you, which it already is, it's just you never spoke to it. And that's a sign of disrespect. So be respectful, show your, your greatest self, go out to a park or, or sit on the sidewalk or go out into the country, but where you live, local land. And Make it your family, and the land has the power to take care of you and to protect you during these times. And that's happening for people. It's happening for people. The people who fall in love with the land, um, they're being protected, and all of a sudden they're entering into a flow where their life is getting more graceful and easier, just just from one that simple act. And a story I share a lot, I saw this on Facebook, um, was about a Navajo woman, beautiful Navajo woman, who was so in love with water, so in love, love affair with water. Um, you know, people who have lived on the land for hundreds of years, we love, love the land, you know. Um, and so you know, she has this love affair with water and there's a storm coming in, a flood coming in and it looked like the water was going to destroy all the homes. And so she said, are you willing to just divert, keep flowing? I don't want to stop your flow, but are you willing to just divert a little bit to save our homes? And the water did. And so one of the things that we can learn from the ancestors of this planet is how to work with the elements as allies. What's happening right now and has been very disturbing to me is a lot of people in, in the shamanic community come together to try to manipulate the elements. Mm -hmm. Let's try to force the rain to stop the fires. Let's all gather. We can gather a million people online and we can push the wind to push um, some weather pattern out. And that's, that's, not, that's not how you work with nature because that's ego wanting to control change. But if you work from spirit and you form this amazing kinship with everything in your environment, you'll, you'll find out what plants 
will give you the medicine to heal you, what trees have medicine to heal you, the land will support you, the land will help you get work, the land will help you find healthy relationships, but we have to make these forces our allies. They're our family. <laughs> Woohoo! I like to think we're a walking, talking expression of the earth and of our land. How important it is, even to know the ditch behind your house if you're in the city, how important it is to know your land. In fact, I was just looking up as we were speaking here. There's a, a, a place in Seattle where there are no police at the moment. It's, I, if I have it right, the Capitol Hill Autonomous Zone called CHAZ. And at the entrance to the six block radius that they, the people have, quote unquote, taking back, and without going into the politics of it, but, but there are... There are uh, um, drawings on the ground with flowers all yeah. in these drawings of welcome to Chaz and then there are shrines all filled with flowers and candles in this zone and I can't help but think people are reclaiming this in a sense for nature even though it's completely paved they're reconnecting to something greater than themselves and they're going into ritual or ceremony with the earth maybe even without realizing it in this sacred space as well absolutely and that's what we need we need these new types of ceremonies because even in shamanic cultures, they're changing their chants. They're changing their ceremonies. The times have changed right now. I tell people one of the greatest things that you can do is put beautiful words on a rock and, and leave it out on the land. Leave flowers out on the land. Leave sacred herbs out on the land. But I do caution people about leaving food out on the land only because uh, all the little creatures are going to eat it. And the way chocolate is made today oh, is no. for our little creatures. And I know people love to, you know, when you love, you love to give what you love. And we all love chocolate, but it's not good for our little nature beings. And so leaving these little gifts, seed crystals, burying seed crystals with um, ideas of peace. When I bury this seed crystal, I'm planting the seed that peace returns to this entire planet. When I bury this crystal, I um, plant the intention that everybody wakes up to how we have to care for our environment. You know, these are really simple things that we can do, but it really makes a difference. What you're talking about now, I want to say you're speaking my language, is, <laughs> is you're talking about all of life as ceremony or ritual, living intentionally connected to the earth with using our words and our choices as blessings. Yes, absolutely. And living it, absolutely living it. Yeah. <laughs> So how can we make life ceremony during this time? Yeah, so the very first thing um, I teach people is you really have to start noticing when you're getting triggered um, because this psychic dart um, of going into the collective, this is bigger than we, than, than we, our minds, our ego, our personality can embrace. This is a vast uh, subject because shamans are gardeners of energy. And so they only work with energy. That's what we work with in shamanism. And so, so what you feed grows. When we are a gardener, we know that what we feed grows. Right now, we're feeding fear, anger, hate, frustration. It's growing. It's growing into our collective. So this is the first thing that we have to change, first practice that we have to start doing. And so we go in, I am angry, I am angry. And I go, I have the right to express my anger, but I ask that the energy behind my anger be transformed and transmuted. I'm using the words as the same, transformed or transmuted into love and light that feeds every living being in the collective. 
with love and light. So you're not compromising yourself, but you realize you got triggered. So you don't want to shoot the gun. You realize you're triggered. You expressed yourself. And now you step back. And so here are a few different ways that you could work. What I do is what I just said. I, um, I just say to myself, I ask that the energy behind my emotions be transmuted to love and light that feeds all of life and, and include yourself in there too. Um, another one that I really, this is, this works like magic. So shamanism embraces unity theory that we're all one. So let's say there's a political leader that you hate out there and you're sending hate, 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 hate. That's going to hurt you bad. <laughs> it's that hate is just coming right back to you. It's coming back to your grandchildren. It's coming back to your children. It's coming back to the tree that you love. It's coming back to everything. It's going into the water you drink. So, um, so what I do, this is, this is, it works like magic. I love elephants. I mean, I really love elephants beyond what is probably healthy because I get too <laughs> involved. In, in what's happening to the elephants right now, and it's not good for my health. So anybody I don't like or, you know, I'm angry at, I impose the face of an elephant on their face. I can't send hate to an elephant. Yeah. I can't. It, it doesn't live in me. I started with kittens because I love kittens. How do you send a psychic dart that you know <laughs> to destroy your health? to a baby kitten. How do you do it? So you impose the image on, on a person's face. And that works really well. Another one is uh, carry a little bottle of essence fragrances with you. And when you notice that you're being triggered, um, smell your favorite essence and let that energy dissipate so that you can ask for the energy to be transformed into love and light. Um, take a, a sip out of a glass of water or eat some food. Do you want that energy in your food or water? That will stop you from being triggered. And um, it will get you to be able to say, I ask that that energy be transformed into love and light. So that's the very first thing we have to do because we have to clear the collective of, of the darkness. The, the shadow is so dark. We must do the shamanic work of going through the dark night of the soul and stepping into the light of the shaman um, because that's the process. What would you thank you so much? And I'm picturing all of these Ganeshes running around now, and it's really, really fun. So what would you say is the second shamanic step in this process to take us from the darkness, as you say, to transmute to the light? Yeah, so um, so we, we need to work with uh, transmuting. Mm -hmm. We need to love ourselves. And in our culture, people don't love themselves. And so what I do is I have people, you can do uh, this on your own, put on some really nice music without words and ask to meet your creator, creative forces of the universe, whoever you believe in, God, the goddesses, whoever you believe in, and ask to be shown how much love went into your creation, how much love went into your creation. And when people get that, then if you say, I, I don't feel worthy and I don't feel lovable, which is a huge problem in our culture, you've just insulted your creator in all of life. And when people get that, they have to step back. And so learning how to love oneself is really important. And then we need to do ceremony. Um, we need to do ceremonies. So here's some ceremonies that I really love. Number one, releasing ceremonies. We want to release. 
some of the, the trauma that's so stuck in us, we're dragging it along with us. We've hardened our shells so that we're losing a sense of compassion. And so we have to let go of all the stuff, the old stuff that we're just dragging around with us that's not letting us step into another part of evolution where we could have a different perspective on what's going on in the world. So again, elements are so important for doing a ceremony. You can uh, take uh, something that you're really upset about from your past and you can blow it into a stone and you can bury it into the earth but don't bury the negativity into the earth. Again, ask that it be transformed into love and light that the earth uses as creates new fertile soil with. So, you know, you're not dumping. Don't dump into the elements. But start to identify what's the pain that you're carrying that's being reflected out in the world right now. Because the more everybody does their own work in shamanism, again, going back to oneness and unity, it's understood that whatever work you do for yourself, you're doing for everybody. So you identify a trauma inside of you, an old trauma, I don't feel worthwhile, I, I don't feel equal. I, I don't feel like people recognize me. I don't feel like I'm empowered. And start to release those states of consciousness. Um, you can do fire ceremonies of creating a, a stick with winding yarn around it and blowing what you're releasing into it so it embodies it and you put it into the fire you can even do it at home with a piece of paper and burn it in in a bowl write down what you're releasing um blow bubbles into the air with what you're releasing but ask that it be transformed to love and light bring it to the water use the elements and then the reverse of that, let's start dreaming the new dream for the planet. Let's, we got to put that in. There's so much dissolution happening. Let's start building the new structure. Let's start building that new invisible field of substance that turns into form. And so start to do ceremonies. I would like to see people wake up to we need clean water. Um, uh, I would love to see equality all over the earth. Give your wishes to the elements. And what happens is, is in ceremony, here's you. Mm -hmm. You step out of your ego and you step into your divine self and then you fully align with the universe. You make a, a connection, like a phone line. Every time you do a ceremony, you've made a phone line connection and said to the universe, please help me manifest this, and the universe will work with you. If you've been doing your spiritual practices and you're not just talking about doing them, but you're doing them, the universe will work with you to bring about what we need in the right timing. Again, we're very focused on very small periods of timing. And one more thing, lastly, the last um, practice that I'd love to share, this is the practice that has become the most popular in the world right now, including my students who are bringing spiritual practice in, into the hospitals um, to help with the COVID. Um, it's called Transfiguration, and um, it's where we understand that we're more than a body, we're more than our mind, uh, we are a reflection of our creator, our creator is only radiant light, and so the easiest way to do this is I have people imagine uh, their favorite star growing in their solar plexus, and letting that light fill every cell. And if you do that for like 15 minutes a day, it's amazing how your health will improve. Put on some music, 
do it for a few minutes a day. But then let that light flow outside of you and allow it to see it uh, going within and throughout the entire earth, touching um, all of life. And so we're not, this is the feminine principle of who we become changes the world, not what we do, because we're not sending the light anywhere. We're not healing anybody without permission. We're just being like a star in the night sky. A star doesn't say, oh, I'm too tired today to shine. That's its nature, just like us. And it doesn't send. It just shines. And it lights up the whole entire planet. And so this is the feminine principle of becoming a presence of light so that every step that you take on the planet and every person you meet, you uplift into their own light because they'll see your reflection of light. This is the most um, uh, important practice that I'm teaching right now to bring light uh, back onto this earth again. You and me both. Woohoo! We are the light. We come from light. We couldn't be anything other than the light, no matter how much we try. That's right. From there, I am holding here a little Zuni fetish. This is a representation of a mountain lion, Maximilian. Uh, I think it was the end of last year. I was doing a, a sales video on a, a window around in the studio here when a mountain lion jumped up from the bushes, showed himself on camera, and then and then kind of ran off with this giant like three or four foot tail on camera. And it got me thinking, well, first off, I, I established a connection with him very, very quickly. His name is Maximilian, of our ability to call in spirit and call in spirit animals. What can you tell us about this? Well, uh, there's a couple of ways. There, there's two different answers to your question. What you saw is what we call in shamanism an omen. So, you know, you're being, you're, you're working on certain things, you're looping ideas, you're all excited about something, and a mountain lion shows up in the window and on the camera. That means something. Oh, I mean, heck yeah. how many times does that happen? Um, you know, I, I'm amazed to hear this story, delightfully amazed to hear this story. And so that was a message for you, a good message for you, a beautiful omen. Go for it. Own your power, you know. Um, and uh, but then one of the ceremonies, one of the classic ceremonies of a shaman is what's called a shamanic journey, where um, we live in the world here of earth and nature. We call that the middle world. And we can actually journey into the middle world and talk to trees and plants and mountain lions here. Um, and that's your way to connect with nature and the sky and the moon. And then there's what's called the lower world and upper world. And they're outside of this realm of existence. Uh, they're uh, called the other world, the dream time, the unseen realms, the parallel uh, realms. Um, and here we have what are called transcendent spirits, helping spirits, compassionate spirits. They're looking down at earth and they're going, oh my God, these <laughs> people are so busy playing the game of life. They have no perspective on what's going on. And so they try to give us a different perspective and they try to give us guidance mm -hmm. to help us improve our health, help us improve our lives, help us contribute more to our communities, help us improve what's happening on the planet and to contribute what's happening on the planet and they also have amazing healing abilities, too. And so shamans intentionally go on what we call a shamanic journey. Um, a shaman is a man or woman who goes into an altered state of consciousness and journeys into the unseen realms to make contact with these helping, compassionate spirits 
to bring back guidance, to bring back healing, um, to bring back wisdom and knowledge. And um, they take different forms. Uh, some of the helping spirits are take the form of an animal. Some of them take the form of an insect or, you know, any living being you can think of. Some of them um, take the form of a master teacher. A lot of people have Jesus, Mary, uh, Ganesh, uh, the Buddha, um, Merlin, um, and the list goes on. So there's this whole wealth of helping spirits who would all they want to do is help. That's all they want to do is help us. Um, and so there's beautiful guidance that we can get um, when we consult with the spirits. And if I can say that's just one of the things that I'm really shocked about today is on Facebook, everybody's saying, I think, I think, I think, I think, in the shamanic Facebook pages. And shamanism is, never uses the word I. A shaman would never use the word I. We're only a channel for the spirits. That's all we are is a channel for the spirits. And so what should be happening on the shamanic Facebook pages is I journey to my helping spirits to ask for a perspective. I ask for I journey to the helping spirits to ask for a tool to help me right now. And so we're not putting our practice into action. And um, we're disempowering ourselves as an entire community. When you dive in, thank you so much for sharing. When you dive in, I know you've already shared a bunch of it, but what are you getting at that deepest level when you go into the spirit realm and you go, what in the world is going on right now? And where do we go from here? Yeah, well, I... Um, before uh, the COVID, last year, before things started heating up, they were heating up in their own way. I met a bunch of spirits called the Ancient Ones, yeah. and they started talking to me about, um, uh, about timing, the blink of the eye, uh, focus more on staying very present and what you want to do. Um, Isis brings me the most gorgeous ceremonies to do with my groups and for myself for healing. Um, I've been healed of life threatening problems from my helping spirits. Um, uh, there, there's really nothing that it, it gets tricky because as human beings, we want to know why we want to know why. And in shamanism, we have to accept that there are mysteries in the universe that we're never going to know the answers to. I said to my own power animal once, I said, you know, I'd really love to know the answer to this mystery. And I said, but that's okay. I'll, I'll understand it all when I die. I'll get all the answers when I die. And he looked at me and he said, why do you think that? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, the paradoxes will continue. <laughs> yeah, so the spirits help us. They try to give us a, a bigger perspective. Mm -hmm. They talk to us about sacred reciprocity, that what you give, you get back. Um, they do a lot of healing work for us, but they teach us how to grow up. You know, a lot of us didn't have the elders that taught us spiritual tools, and they teach us how to work ethically to help the world. They give us a better perception on time because um, we might not see the changes we want to see in our lifetime. And so that doesn't mean that the work that we did wasn't successful. It just means that the work needed to continue for a longer time. And so they give us a different perspective that we can't see because we're looking at a human's eyes instead of looking at a spirit eyes. And they only see light and love in everyone. That's it. They only see light and love in everyone. And that's what they're trying to teach us right now. If I see people who 
are, quote, suffering with the COVID, uh, suffering with loss and grief, suffering with feeling inequality. I'm, I'm actually seeing them as a disempowered person. The spirits see them in their strength and in their light so that they can tap into their innate healing abilities and the solutions that are in our DNA that we came in with, that we were born with. They help us to go deeper from just a mental state into a true spiritual state so that we're living our work. Again, that's the key is in shamanism, you have to live the work. You got, you got me thinking of both Carl Jung and the Ashuar, and it's interesting to combine the two. Carl Jung, Ashuar, and the Aborigines. We're talking about, uh, Carl Jung would say, or Jung would say, the waking world is the dream world, the dream world is the waking world. The Ashuar are people of, of the, uh, Amazonian, uh, uh, the Amazon, but from Ecuador, who they get up in the morning and they ask the children, what were your dreams? And the Aboriginals certainly are living along a dream time, a different way of being in the world. Can we access this and can we do our you say living our work can we live our work through our dreams and it's the last point it's fascinating to me that so many people are getting such interesting dreams and i'll put that in quotes again going back to interesting during this time yeah dreams are a form of shamanic journey and so um people who aren't trained in shamanic journeying are journeying in their dreams and they're getting information, they're getting healing, and they're getting premonitions, and and the spirits are talking to them in their dreams. So, uh, you know, we have a whole section in Awakening to the Spirit World on working with dreams. It's such an important part of the shamanic practice. And then the other thing about that, too, is uh, there was a shamanic teacher who went down to to the jungle and he was working with a tribe and he had a really good relationship with this tribe. And he said to one of the elders, when I come back uh, to America, uh, what should I, what advice should I bring to the people here? And he said, you have to teach your people how to dream. They don't know how to dream. And so they're dreaming nightmares, they're dreaming chaos. And so um, in shamanism, it's understood, number one, every word that you say has a vibration that manifests into form. Every thought that you have leads to the station of where that thought's gonna go. So what are you thinking about? You know, where, where are your thoughts going? And we're, we're dreaming all the time. So I'm sitting here talking to Michael, and I'm, and I'm starting to dream, huh, I wonder if actually if any of this stuff is going to work out. Yeah, I just, that's, that's what I just dreamed into being. So we have to use discipline. And you know, everybody listening to this, knows how much discipline we need to use to stop the looping nightmare daydreams about how bad, how bad, and things are getting worse. They've gone too far. We're dreaming the wrong dream. We're dreaming more dissolution instead of we're not dreaming the new healing world coming into form after the dissolution, because always after death, again, we are nature. Death is not an end. It's just a beginning. Well, that brings up several interesting points. First off, abracadabra, I will create as I speak. And then death, I am looking at this, and I want to hear your take on it. And then, then we'll get into briefly journeying. We'll take a brief journey and, and call it good. This has been so special. But I am seeing a collective death of humanity right now, but it's really a shamanic dismemberment yes. to birth something new and even greater than we could imagine. Exactly. Yeah, how I try to explain, because I've been talking about we're in a shamanic dismemberment, which is an initiation. Right. Every time you make a change in shamanism, uh, 
it's believed you've gone through an initiation. And all initiations involve a dismemberment where there's a dissolution, there's something to be lost, but there's something to be gained, and that's the power in it. And so the metaphor that I like to use is think about the gorgeous rock formations in the Grand Canyon. If anybody's ever been there, you know how the water and the wind, it had to carve away at that hard rock to make these incredible, beautiful uh, formations. So in a dismemberment and an initiation, what happens is whatever you believe in, the power of the universe, the helping spirits come in, and they start pulling away the illness, the the, uh, self-defeatist thoughts. Um, They start carving away at your ego that is not allowing you to shine as bright as you can. So the whole purpose is to be reborn into a luminescent being, to be reborn. And you can't go from the density of where we are into that luminous state unless you let go of um, a lot of uh, your personality. And so people uh, are carved. They're, they're actually sculpted into a more spiritual being through an initiation. So the death part, it's not that pleasant. You know, you're, you're being carved. You're being re-sculpted into a completely different being. I actually was told in a journey that I was being re-put into an ice cream maker to make a new flavor. (laughs) But that was my dismemberment. I like that. That's a very positive way of looking at it rather than the owl. (laughs) Yeah, so we end up stepping into our beauty And then it's important that our community welcomes us home for the changed being that we are. And so that's going to be a really important part of the ceremony that happens to heal us after a lot of uh, what we're experiencing right now clears is to welcome everybody back into a new uh a state where you've woken up into a higher consciousness that needs to be acknowledged by your community for the initiation to be complete. Wow, wow, wow. Let's go from there real briefly. If you can talk to me about um, drums and ceremony. Because there is a power in sound. There's a power in drumming. I'm wishing I had brought up my drum from downstairs. I did bring up my flute, but I'm not even going to attempt to play it here right now. But there is a power in this, isn't there? Oh, absolutely. Just listening to the drum will change your brain waves and will create endorphins to calm you down. So just listening to drumming is going to calm you down. It's going to flood you with good feelings. And the drum changes our brain waves, and that's what gives us the ability to be able to travel into the unseen realms. Now, Hank Wesselman, who wrote Awakening to the Spirit Realms with me, he's, a, he's more of a scientist. He's an anthropologist, so he loves to get into the actual science of the beat numbers and the frequency and all of that. But for me, um, it's... The drum has been around globally for 100,000 years. Why are people using this thing called the drum? It helps people change consciousness. It, it allows people, and it becomes the shaman's greatest ally. Shamans are, are buried with their drums. Um, uh, I worked with a, a Siberian shaman once who he had to ask his drum if it was willing to work before we did a ceremony. They're wow. living beings. They're actual living beings. And um, they're allies for the shaman. In Siberia, the drum is called the horse that takes the shaman on his or her flight. 
And so the drum helps us to enter into the unseen realms. And ceremony is the vehicle of change for shamans. That's how uh, shamans create change, is by performing a ceremony, as I described, where you set an intention, you connect fully with the universe, you step out of your humanness, connect with the the universe, and let the universe know what you want. Woohoo! So on that note, before we dive into ceremony here, how important is diving into a spiritual practice or connecting to nature or the spiritual realm during this time? Um, it, it's the most important thing that you can do for yourself and for the world. Because Again, every change that you make is going to affect the entire world. And nature is our greatest healer. Nature is our greatest healer. Get into nature and um, you will be amazed at what happens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Would you mind leading us in a uh, ceremony? Yeah. Yeah. on your heart and think about how precious life is and how precious your life is and using your imagination travel within yourself Just imagine going down through your crown, down into your solar plexus. Move your energy there. And imagine this beautiful star, or the sun, or a flame. It's beautiful light. Watch how it moves, it's dancing throughout your entire body, and it's so fast. It's much faster than your form. And you allow yourself for your own healing and your own well-being to soak in that light to every cell of your body. And now let's all think about this gorgeous planet Earth. It's stunning with all its beings. And so many innocents are being affected by what's happening right now with so many different aspects of change, whether it's illness or climate change or political unrest. I know your heart wants to help. I know you want to contribute. So let that starlight, that sunlight, that flame shine. Or if you're in love with the moon, let your moonlight shine. You're not sending it anywhere, but keep in your consciousness all the beings that you love, 
all the places that you love, the land that you live on, earth, air, water, fire. Just keep your focus on what you love and experience that light being soaked in everywhere into the collective, moving some of the shadow states out that need to be moved to give space for healing to happen. Flooding the earth with light. Don't completely disconnect from that light because that light is you. But it is time to return. So just start to feel your form again. You're a human being with this beautiful body that holds this light that is vast, that has the ability to transform any toxin, any hurt, any negativity into pure love and pure healing light. Practice this. Practice this skill and contribute as the feminine is asking you to right now. Be a presence of love and light in the world. Don't talk about it. Be that presence. Our work is done for now, but let me end with just giving you a little hit a uh, fairy bell. Welcome back, everyone. I love it, Sandra. I love you. I love it. I love you. Oh man, this is so much fun. This is such a goodness, and and how we're feeling, I think, as a group, having done this with you, is. This work, although it is work, I'll put that in quotes, doesn't have to be all hard, doesn't have to be all difficult, doesn't have to be heavy, but can be about and from and within the light. Exactly. Yeah, I, I had a teacher uh, who taught me Tarot and I worked with her for a really long time and she's deceased now, but um, she was from the Basque tradition. And she taught that in the vast tradition, it's believed that we're all walking stars on this great giant star Earth. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. And if we went from a purely scientific, and, and that, that drives me nuts because we are all one. You can't call it science spirit. It's, it's all just oneness. However, we're stardust. We're walking, talking stardust. That's... End of story. Every cell, every atom in your being came from the stars. Exactly. Exactly. So shine your light. <laughs> Woohoo! So on that note, where can people go to find your beautiful book, Sandra, Awakening to the Spirit World, and to find your podcast with Renee Barabiel? You can get the book, you know, anywhere where online... Or you can go to my website, sandraingerman.com, and all my books and, and CDs are listed there. And I have so many articles on shamanism. There's so much. Everybody tells me my webpage is archaic, and it's because I just want to give people a lot of information on shamanism. So there's a lot there. And Renee Barabo and I are doing a podcast once a week called The Shaman's Cave, so go to shamanstv.com, shamanstv.com, and we have all the shows in archive, and we're trying to keep people inspired, and we are so different. We are so different. We're like two little different old ladies talking together, so... 
Um, You're both beautiful. You know that. You're both, <laughs> both, both, both so, so beautiful. Yeah, and so people are getting a lot out of the show. We have different opinions. We agree on almost nothing, um, but we bring in true shamanic wisdom. <laughs> Woohoo! So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler saying, be well, have fun, get awakening to the spirit world, and begin diving into your own awakening and shining your light bright today and Shine bright. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Sandra. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Your 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 joy. You are a being of light on this planet. Thank you for being born. <laughs> If you're watching this, then you are a light worker. You're a light warrior, and I want to help. We offer everything from boot camps, mini masterclasses, full on masterminds, and private one on one coaching with me. To find out more about our upcoming courses, simply visit inspirenationuniversity.com or click on the links below. And to find out more about coaching, simply visit inspirenationshow.com backslash coaching. We also have weekly YouTube live events with me where you can ask me your questions live and YouTube premieres featuring me and our guests. Simply subscribe below and click on the bell icon to be notified of upcoming shows. I just had the most beautiful Beyond Words interview with Sandra Ingerman on tapping into the spirit world to heal ourselves, to heal our planet, to be dismembered, and to come back whole anew to be the starlight that we are, to check out more incredible You Are The Light interviews. Click here, subscribe below. Be sure to click on that bell icon to be notified of our upcoming shows, our YouTube premieres, and live events with me every Sunday night. And be sure to join us for our next Boot Camper Mini Masterclass. Click on the link below to find out more. In fact, we've got a whole Boot Camp collection now that you can come to and find out really how to take your life to the next level. So you can click on the link below to find out about our boot camp collection and our next classes. Love you guys so, so much. Big thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Leave your comments below. Shine bright. Woohoo! Love you guys. Love you guys. Love you guys. <laughs>